Welcome to this week's changelog, where we bring you the updates and changes on Solana each week. Uh, my name is Jacob. I'm joined here by Colin today. Let's get started. So right now, if you want to join in the hackathon and participate in building something really cool, there's a community hackathon going around right now through Lamport DAO. It's called the Solana Sandstorm Hackathon. Totally recommend uh, entering it. The we as Solana Foundation are sponsoring it. You can build like local tooling. You can build like things for NFTs, uh, DeFi. Just go build for it. Like push the boundaries of Solana and let's see what some cool projects that we can get out of it. I think it's a really great way to get involved with what's happening in the Solana ecosystem. And it's not a really long one. It actually ends on the 23rd of January. So just build something, get involved and yeah, ship and then see how it goes. Yeah. And I think, uh, so we have the proposal highlight today is uh, SIMD3, which is dynamic based fees. Uh, Colin, you want to go into that a little bit? Yep. I think this one is a very interesting one, actually. And I think it's probably something that could potentially be split up into two different proposals because there's two things in one. So in this dynamic base fees proposal, the first thing is actually changing the way the base fee has been calculated currently, which is just done by the amount of signatures in a transaction to actually be based on the amount of compute units per transaction instead. Then the secondary component of that is to add a mechanical mechanism where the um, total fee is dynamic just based on the current load on the network. And I guess just at a high level, this is um, some kind of like spam protection or uh, actually just a way to like desensitize um, people spamming the network because, um, or at least make you begin to figure out uh, a different optimal way to get your transactions in as opposed to just spamming uh, the transactions constantly. So I think it's definitely something that needs to be addressed. Um, so yeah, it's a, a good proposal and some good discussions are on the GitHub as well. Yeah, the SIMD process is really kicking off with this one. Uh, there seems yeah. to be a lot of uh, a, a lot of discussion on this one, and like, yeah. how can we make it better? Um, how do we change fees correct to correctly match what is mm-hmm. happening on the network? Uh, looking forward to like what this turns into in the long run. Uh, I don't mm-hmm. know if it'll be accepted and at this point in time. It doesn't look like consensus is there yet. Mm-hmm. But what, whatever happens at the time uh, of consensus, like it'll be interesting to see it being tested out on the network. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's also something that is worth reading into, like irrespective of like what you consider your own technical ability to be. The, the discussions there are actually very insightful to kind of see how people think about um, different ways to to make the network more stable and kind of like see the different angles of where people are coming from. So definitely worth a read. Yeah, awesome. And then, uh, so we have a few commit highlights this week. Um, so one of them was that, uh, so right now, mainnet beta is running 1.13 and it will be at some point in the near future upgraded to 1.14. And if mm-hmm. you have seen recently with, on the fee discussion, like have you seen recently, a lot of people have been using prioritization fees uh, to get into the blocks, but it's kind of been slow moving for wallets and other uh, D apps to integrate prioritization fees. So there's an RPC called uh, called Get Recent Prioritization Fees, which kind of gives you a estimate of what the recent prioritization fees are, so that you can better estimate what your future prioritization fees are going to be. Um, So what you can do is this call, you can call it, and then you can use it to determine like, okay, what do I think that a good fee amount would be for right Right. now so I can get into the block? Um, So this call was originally going to be in 1.15. It's been moved to 1.14. And some people are already using it today. Like I believe Jupyter uses this today. Uh, to basically allow the users to get into blocks easier, so it's it's a it's a cool change. Um, it's mm-hmm. a great like greatly needed RPC call right now. Yeah, it's actually interesting because that um, reminds me of a, a a related commit that I saw um, that that um, that method's also been added to the Rust client. So if you're building Rust clients, um, you would also have access to that RPC call. Uh, another commit highlight is the update to compute costs um, because the way it was initially estimated was slightly incorrect 
Um, so now they've fixed that. So as a result, the cost estimates have been adjusted upward, but just very slightly. Uh, so it's a level where like you may not even recognize a change, but it's just to uh, keep in mind that those compute costs have gone up a little bit. Yeah, do note that the, this was on the curve 25519 syscalls. Um, so it's yeah. not across the board, but specifically to curve 25519. Um, another, another thing that happened, uh, I think this past, yeah, this past Saturday or the Saturday before, um, there, there was a kind of a mismatch in runtime for 1.14, a bunch okay. of people, I think like 9% of people or validators uh, were deployed with 1.14 on mainnet beta. However, the, basically what, what's great is it was caught in regression almost. It's like. Uh, the normal user didn't even notice the network changed a little bit. Uh, yeah. Actually, I didn't. Nobody really noticed it, other than the core <laughs> engineers. Uh, what happened is there was a small runtime change uh, mismatch between 1.14 and 1.13. Thankfully, we were doing proper rollout of 1.14, mm -hmm. so it was caught. Um, it didn't affect the network, and it's been fixed. So really cool. Uh, basically. It was a really great example of good testing and being able to catch problems before they actually cause issues. Uh, so yeah, that was a, a cool thing that happened. And then uh, Colin, I think you have our resource of the week. Yep. So resource of the week is Golana. And kind of like, as the name suggests, it's um, a way to build smart contracts on Solana in the Go programming language. And I think this is something that's very exciting because I think the more languages that we can support and offer, it kind of just like uh, begins to attract more developers into the ecosystem. So now it's not just Rust that's supported, it's Rust, Python, and Go. And I'm like so um, curious to kind of see like what other languages will be supported next. I think uh, TypeScript is also in the works. But yeah, so the resource of the week is Golana. So if you are a Go developer in Solana, please go check that out. As of, and as always, everything is open source. So you can kind of give feedback and comments and suggest different improvements to it. But very excited to have um, that language on board. Yeah, do note that uh, Golana is still in like alpha stages. So mm -hmm. it can't do everything yet, but it's really <laughs> cool. There's, it's really cool that what you can do with it. I think the, the maintainer built like Hello World and an escrow program, so you can test those out and a little bit more. Sounds good. So that wraps up the changes in the Solana developer ecosystem this week. Um, join us next week for more. And just before we leave, quick shout out to John C, who earned the most reputation on the Solana Stack Exchange this week. So looking forward to see who else is going to dethrone him for next week. Awesome. All right. Thank you.